General Patton. He said, never be in a hurry. And I was, and, uh, I was shot at one time, and I ducked my head down. He said, uh, just wait. Inquisitive as the Germans are, he'll look up. And I waited, it must have been a, quite a long time. And he looked up, and there was my man, and I shot him. And we carried some small grenades. We cut the uh, fuse on it from six to three seconds. So it would explode quick. So I threw one of those in where the shot come from, and then the rest of my platoon went straight on up, and we'd pretty well wiped it out. So we just proceeded on. Uh, another one, we uh, had a time on target with our, we dropped uh, 75 howitzers by parachute in pieces and put them together. And uh, we had time on target on a little village like, and we fired, I uh, forget how many rounds, an awful lot. Then proceeded to go through the little village like a little crossroad. And that, I think, was the most sorrowful thing I ever seen. Because we killed people, children, horses, dogs, everything. But we weren't allowed to stop. We could see what had happened. And that was about the most impressive thing on my mind. Because I knew we had a part in that. And I wasn't very proud of it. Uh, other one, we were, that's, there were so many things. I had the other one, had three of them planned out. But we uh, went up to Germany uh, after the war was over. I volunteered for occupation duty. And I wanted to go up in there and I was in no hurry. I wasn't married or anything. So I, uh, wanted to see what damage we had done to uh, Berlin. And uh, it was nothing but rubble, just as bad as the news pictures said. And uh, we met several people apart. We lived at uh, our barracks. Our house was 16 Heinersdorfer Schloss. was across from the uh, uh, monument for the first band to ever fly like a bird, you know, wings, round and round and round the circle to get to the top, and he glided off. And uh, that's where we lived, where our barracks was. And uh, we were on patrol there, and next thing I knew, someone come down behind me, throw their arm around my neck, and I didn't expect anything. And I looked back like that, and someone jammed a bottle in my mouth. It was a Russian soldier. He had a bottle of vodka, and if I'd have got to my gun, I'd have shot him. But he was happy. He was celebrating the victory, too. But he pretty much choked me to death with that hundred and some proof of vodka. I couldn't catch a breath or anything until he was down and out of sight. So I remember that pretty well. So there's all oh, hundreds of things I could talk about. Uh, we uh, was in uh, southern France, and they took the uh, my. I had a six by six. They took all my equipment off of it. They said they needed to bring the uh, infantry back because the Germans were preparing for a, a, a advance. They left me there with uh, uh, my helper and two fifty caliber machine guns and plenty of ammunition. So where the Germans were going to come was up around a cliff like this, and a ro the road was cut right into the cliff. So we started, well, what are we going to do? So we decided, well, the big Tiger Royal was their biggest, heaviest tank, and they had started around the bend there, and they had to go real slow. So we started with those two to 50 calibers, shooting underneath the road, and it was about a mile and a half away. But those 50 calibers had a four mile range. So we got the range of it. So we started firing underneath the uh, road and finally got the road to cave in and down went the Tiger Royal and down went the road. 
had stopped their advance. They couldn't, they couldn't go no farther. So that was one of the things that the, the Silver Star was offered, was, I was put in for. But at that next, uh, before he ever got to finish it, he was killed in the next uh, expedition we had there. So he never finished it. So I never got my Silver Star. So, so I enjoyed my Army service sometimes. Sometimes I was pretty sorrowful. I was I was engaged to be married when I went over, but I got my dear John letter and said that he didn't, she didn't want to wait no more. So before we went on the mission, I answered her letter and told her, if you meet me on the street, don't speak to me, don't look at me, because I won't answer. And I did meet her several times here in Youngstown and uh, never, never recognized her. And that was a, a, one of the sad parts of my Army career. And it, uh, of course, she died quite a long time ago, too, but all that's forgotten and forgiven about. I did very much so. Then I had a brother who was in England. He was in the Air Force, but he was a radio man back in the, and he never saw no action. And I had a brother in law. He was mentioned in Ernie Pyle's book. He was sleeping in a foxhole. And Ernie Pyle looked over and seen a poisonous snake coming right up in his foxhole. If it had a gun, it would have probably bit him and killed him. But Ernie Powell jumped on it and killed it. I've got the book at home. Wow. <laughs> so on. So many things like that I could talk for oh, all day. Different sort of things. <laughs>